here it is. This is a Galileo da Vinci, uh, yeah, Galileo da Vinci <laughs> trumpet based on the, uh, the uh, Bel Canto 580 <clears throat> is what it says on their site. Never heard of these before, saw it online, thought I would pick it up. It's a really cool horn. Um, I dig it a lot. It's in raw brass. Um, the valves are really, I don't know, they're not sluggish. They're really speedy, but they're really soft and fluffy feeling. Good compression. Um, I like the fact that it has uh, water keys on both. I happen to be a spitty kind of player, so I like to be able to empty. I have some trumpets that don't, and I think they're more efficient. That's why they don't put them on there. Um, I even had a, uh, a John Faddis model that from Shooky that, that had no water keys, and it was just kind of a pain to constantly having to be taking out the, the slides to, to empty it. Um, so anyway, this has that. It's got all the rings. I do really prefer uh, rings on everything. Got some cool, I don't know if you can see it, it's got some nice little etching, you know, scroll work on there. It's a small little four and seven eighths inch bell. I mean, but man, oh, and it has these, I, I really dig, like I like the, the design of this. I'm a real big fan of like dull brass and dull, like the nickel finish on these. I think it looks really cool. Um, but it has kind of like the downturn here, which I really, I really enjoy that as well. I thought that was cool. And I don't own a trumpet that has that kind of weird shape there. They're usually much more symmetrical. You know, they come up like here, but this, these drop down. And I don't know if that makes any difference. Uh, I have yet to kind of weigh in on that, but I really, really like this trumpet. This is a really cool horn. Um, I've been playing it a lot lately and I, Man, I just, I can't put the thing down. It's one of those instruments, if you know what I mean, where you pick it up and you're just having a good time. It's just fun to play and it makes you keep on playing. Another thing I wanted to mention is that if you notice I'm using this, like what the heck is that weird mouthpiece? Well, this is a Lotus mouthpiece. I'm a big fan of Lotus trumpet mouthpieces. Not so much of their flugelhorn, but I really like the trumpet mouthpieces. Um, this is their wood mouthpiece, the, the turbo wood, I think it's called. Um, and it's in a 3L turbo wood. Now, one of the things I didn't realize, let me show you this. I, I, I don't think that it matters, but I didn't realize that this is actually a two-piece mouthpiece. <laughs> so, kind of cool. I mean, it comes together. You can clean that thing off a lot better that way. And, you know, maybe if uh, there's any damage to something, you could always replace it. Or maybe they had plans to make, uh, you know, where you can just buy the top part instead of the whole thing. That would be kind of a nice option from Lotus, hint, hint. Uh, but anyway, this is a really cool mouthpiece and I haven't had uh, a lot of luck with it in other horns, but it really likes this one. But the other thing I wanted to mention about this is that this particular mouthpiece, you know, like I said, it's made out of actual wood. I don't know what kind of wood, but some kind of wood. And for me, you know, when, when I play trumpet or a brass instrument, I'm always licking my lips and the mouthpiece is usually pretty slippery. I guess I like that or I'm just, that's how I was taught. So I've been doing that my whole life. This particular mouthpiece, you can, and I don't know why this never dawned on me because I've had this thing for a while, but you can play this with without moistening your lips at all. And it actually plays really nice that way. And for me, who I just mentioned, you know, apparently I blow a lot of water into the instrument that really helps me out because now I'm, there's no condensation or, or extra moisture going down the mouthpiece. It's only what's coming out when I'm doing buzzing. So it's really cool, but I thought that was a neat call out that for some reason took me like, I don't know, I've had this like two or three months and I just realized that this morning, I'm like, hey, maybe I shouldn't be licking my lips when I play this thing. Cause it definitely feels different. Um, you know, they don't say that really when I've seen these Lotus, uh, videos on these mouthpieces. I mean, you know, they always have, and, and this is not a knock on them because they're a wonderful bunch of people, but they're all awesome, outstanding. I mean, like Adam Rappa, the guy has just got to be one of the top five best trumpet players in the whole world. He's outstanding and deservedly so. He's put in the time, you know, all that stuff, and he's built wonderful instruments and mouthpieces with his partners at Lotus. But at the same time, that's not a real... Even the guys they have demoing this stuff, they're, they're not guys like me, right? And, you know, guys like me can afford and want to use stuff like this, too. Just because I'm not a professional trumpet player doesn't mean I don't want to spend 350 bucks on a mouthpiece. I can, so I want to. But it really needs to have some kind of an opinion that's beyond just these amazing players getting on there and screaming through awesome runs and they just sound outstanding 
when a guy like me is never going to do that, but you know, there's still value and benefit to having a mouthpiece like this. Um, so it'd be nice to hear about it from a regular person's perspective. Although perhaps that's not what they're targeting with this. This is more of an elite kind of a professional upscale crowd that would be interested in a mouthpiece like this. And I, maybe I'm an outlier in that regard. But anyway, the point I wanted to make is you can play this without having to wet your lips. And it really, I think this thing has a really cool sound. Um, it's not as dead and raspy as you might think it would be. It's actually pretty lively, um, but it has a different sound. That I, I don't know how else to say it. It kind of takes, instead of, like I'm gonna play for you, but I mean, you know, I'm going through my phone. It really doesn't give you much. I really should do one where I'm playing it into my uh, recording studio and then you can hear comparisons of each one. Cause I think what this really does in my opinion is kind of thickens up the sound. Um, again, I don't play live in, in like an, uh, uh, you know, professionally. So even if I were to play, it would be in some club, you know, through a, like a, an SM57 microphone or, or through nothing. So, but with lots of music behind me that's not classical or soft or, or not nuanced, it's, you know, jazz and hip hop, it's just kind of there. So the nuance of what this thing really sounds like in a big auditorium or something like that is very much lost on me, uh, especially even when I'm recording because I'm recording with my bell right there in the mic and I use an SM7B for that and it's just right inside the bell almost, the, the Miles Davis approach. And with that, you know, you kind of lose the, the room. But again, I don't have a room. Like I'm up in my kitchen now because the acoustics up here are way better for a live sound than, than downstairs in my studio that's really dead and super quiet. The, the horn sounds, it has a good quality down there. Like in that room, it sounds fine. But if you're looking for like a live, what this thing actually sounds like to someone in an auditorium, you know, I don't have a room that does that. The closest I've got is my, my kitchen and it's, I don't know, like 200, 300 square feet. It's not very big. It's not some giant cathedral. Uh, I used to remember when I was a kid, small tangent here, I used to love on my lunch break going into the auditorium when there was nobody there and just noodling on my trumpet because it just sounded so good and I think, you know, I really wish that the traditional instruments like this, when you when you did this stuff in school, and, and perhaps it's changed. None of my kids played any instruments they sang, but no instruments. So I don't know if this is not true, but I really wish that more band teachers would understand that part of getting somebody to commit and want to be a great player is that they have to be in an environment that makes them feel good and it sounds good and it... I don't know how it's. I don't know how to explain that other than that. I, if you know what I'm saying, if you're playing in a room and it sounds like crap because of the room, it's more discouraging than if you're playing in an environment where it's enhanced. It's kind of like singing with reverb or singing without reverb. Most people sound better with a bit of ambiance and reverb supporting their voice, and it makes you feel more confident and 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 just better overall about your ability and your performance because it just sounds better. So I wish that we didn't always have to practice these things in such shitty settings because they it, most of the time it sounds like crap, right? And as a listener, even when you're in the, the band in the room, you don't hear yourself as much individually and not everybody's a soloist. So I think it's really important for younger people or anyone just starting out to get into an environment that actually sounds good. Right, I've said this a lot about guitars too. It's like, I don't have a problem with affordable guitars as long as they're quality. I play music guitars and they're from China and they're amazing and they're 350 bucks. I mean, they rival some of the Gibson and Fender guitars that I have that are five, six, seven times the price. <clears throat> so it's not that just that. It's when I'm playing through a quality amp in a nice room or I have a good simulator through the DI that you can hear the guitar just really sounds awesome, it's got really good reverb on it. You know, that kind of thing makes a big difference. And unfortunately, with all the technical advances and, you know, we've got all these cool custom horns that are out there, no one's really addressed that particular thing where when you practice, it doesn't sound like shit, right? I mean, I have, you know, like a $10,000 home studio. So yeah, when I practice, if I wanna play through it, I can put reverb and delay and compressors and make this thing sound amazing. But you know, some young kid or some student isn't going to be able to do that. And it's seems like it'd be pretty simple, like that Yamaha silent brass system, just shove it in here and it sound good. But man, does that thing not sound good? 
So anyway, let me play a couple notes on this because uh, I just, that's really what I wanted to do when I ended up making this long video. You like my shirt? <laughs> All right, anyway, this is the, uh, I keep forgetting the name of this thing because I've literally never heard of it before. This is the uh, Galileo Dolce Da Vinci B-flat trumpet. <clears throat>